Kew Gardens where Amelia's been coming since she was nine days old. I've been coming since I was not much older. And she's off exploring in the wind. I always think she looks hilariously tiny when she's next to her, like a massive tree or something. Or like, you know, one of the largest glass houses in Europe. You can get up. There we go. Off you go. Literally not dissimilar to having a wind-up toy. <laughs> Apart from the noise and the smells. Bye-bye then. And also the fact they never run out of energy. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Toby Stupid Vlog. Tiny Richmond Park Wanderer. need one more hand and this would be so much easier but we'll just have to make do with what we've got. It is a very nice last day of autumn kind of affair. It's actually quite warm today and the sun's come out. It's not bad, not bad at all. Should we keep going? No, let's not sit down in the middle of the park. Come on, Amelia, come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> you don't seem very sure. Come on, this is, I appreciate taking the knee, but this is not probably the moment because now you've got a very muddy leg. Okay, right. So, good morning, good afternoon. The weather has turned since Amelia was sitting in Richmond Park. She's now asleep. Well, she was when I left the flat. We'll see whether she is when I get back. Um, I'm going to go to m &S. In the meantime, I've heard that my dad gets a COVID vaccine tomorrow. It's a two-step process, if you're not aware. And then gets the second bit on the 5th of Jan. And then I think it takes about three weeks after that for it to be fully effective. So he'll be vaccinated and clear by the end of January. My mum will probably be about a month behind that. And then we can start seeing them with less risk to them. Obviously they could still be carriers, there'd be risk to us. But it allows them to at least relax a little, which would be nice. Um, and yeah, so that's really good. Good start. Nice to get it underway before Christmas. It is the 14th of December today, I believe. And um, yeah, so Christmas, no, hang on, it can't be. No, it is, it is. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Christmas is less than two weeks away. That's the point I'm getting to. It's like 11 days. And uh, is it in hand? No, no not really. Um, is it ever? No, not really. 11 days out seems like a long way out for me, so I need to just check what I've still got to buy and things. But um, obviously Christmas is a bit different this year, so present buying is also being a bit different. Hello, good afternoon. It's only quarter to five, but, you know, Northern Hemisphere and all that. Um, today is Tuesday. And sometimes I just think that Tuesday is just a recovery day. <laughs> because <laughs> if Amelia is in a full troublesome mode, <laughs> let's say, then Monday can be really, really exhausting. And it was you know, exacerbated this weekend by having a cold and some teeth coming through and all sorts, which often occurs together annoyingly. Um, so her sleep wasn't great, but you get to Tuesday and you drop her off at nursery and then obviously you've got work to do, but you can recover in some sense because you've only got work to do and you don't have childcare to do at the same time. And Tuesday is possibly my favorite day of the week. That said, next week is our last week at nursery until the new year because they obviously have a break 
and that's going to be interesting but we do have a lot of things planned despite the whole London in tier three which frankly is not that big a deal um except that we've had a restaurant booking cancelled because restaurants have to close so that's you know obviously disappointing but I mean practically there's no real other differences you can't meet in private gardens um you can still have all the six outdoors so whatevs it's not really helping anybody it's one of these half assed measures that the government's very good at not committing to anything in particular and then claiming to be doing a lot but yeah we are still going to see santa on friday because that is allowed because garden centers are open odd um although i don't know quite how close to santa we're allowed to get probably we'll just wave at him across the car park we'll find out um and we are still planning on doing some festive things they just don't involve eating out unfortunately because eating is the best thing about christmas eating and family family has been somewhat limited by christmas and the rules in place and the fact that the government meet up over christmas things are terrible ideas so we're not doing it um but eating is not restricted in any way in your own home so i'm just going to eat my way through until the new year so i'm just going to keep eating until somebody gives me a vaccine now admittedly it won't it might be quite hard to find a vein <laughs> by the time i've finished eating um but there we go you know we'll just have to we'll just have to see how it goes Okay. No more photos, is that what you're saying? You just like pressing the buttons on the screen, don't you? Which button are you going to press? Evening. I'm doing what I did back in March, which is going for a walk after dinner. And it's like, got nine o'clock. Just to kind of do a bit of exercise before bed, I find it. Firstly, if you haven't done much exercise in the day, it's good for good as a top up, but also it helps you sleep. I find if you're physically tired and we can check out this snow scene of wonder remarkable uh, anyway and it just allowed me to reflect on where, what I'm feeling at the moment which is hopeful not joyous but hopeful like and I've been thinking about the year and I know most people say the worst year you know ever and I suppose objectively for the whole world combined it probably certainly one of the worst in modern in modern history I should suggest since the war maybe but from a personal perspective I actually don't think it firstly for me personally it wasn't that bad and secondly 2016 was much worse like the difference between 2020 and 2016 is the pandemic in 2020 is a physical illness which now has multiple vaccines um, and will continue to evolve and vaccines will continue to evolve much like flu does um, so it was always curable and obviously the curing is the wrong word but it was always preventable and ultimately it would be um, and it's just a very frustrating time in the meantime as people came to terms with the fact that their life had to change um, and and a lot of people lives changed in a way that they will never go back both in terms of tragedy and lives lost etc but from a personal perspective i actually think 2016 was worse and the reason is that it gave rise to a, a worse kind of disease and that the disease is that of stupidity which is not so easily cured and lingers for years and does untold damage 2016 uk referendum on leaving the eu stupid ideas hold in the first place and most people agree that it was really just an ego move and the result was um 
you know, just diabolical and we're still picking up pieces of that now. And well, frankly, we will be for probably a decade as a country. So terrible. And then later in the year, obviously, the Americans chose to elect a narcissist fascist instead of a former first lady because they didn't like the fact that she used her personal email address which is obviously not great but it's also nothing compared to you know saying that terrorists who murder black people and black people are protesting against him being murdered um you know good people on both sides that clearly isn't true um that's just one of many examples so the world lost its mind for a full year and two countries that affect my life the most went massively off the rails and that disease of stupidity is still rife and although america has solved its problem for the time being the uk has not and we are still living on this idiotic sort of backwards vision of like 1950s britain that just doesn't apply so 2016 in my opinion is the worst year in living memory and 2020 is a mere second place if you're going to pull me up on the death toll then might i suggest that the death toll of the united states and the death toll of the united kingdom combined which currently stands at the time of recording at about 365,000 people um, during 2020 due to COVID-19 most of which were present were preventable if you'd had better governments um, and those the root causes of not having better governments both lie in 2016 so I would suggest that all those all those preventable deaths can actually be laid as the fault of 2016 and not 2020. On happier thoughts I was watching um, or had on the telly I should say um, some of those uh, YouTube videos of just fireplaces going because I find that actually <laughs> they make you feel warm <laughs> which is ridiculous it's like a psychosomatic reaction to them and uh, very soothing watching a fire burn and I, and I know all the environmental reasons why burning wood is, is terrible um, this way we can all appreciate just two locks without having to each burn them so in that sense it's slightly better obviously electric costs aside but anyway I was remembering fireplaces from my youth my um, aunt and uncle used to have a proper fireplace in their um, house and um, we would go round to theirs usually um, on boxing day or the following day uh, every Christmas and uh, we'd have first of all Christmas at my grandparents over Christmas day um, and a few days leading up to it. And then we'd go to my aunt and uncle's in Farnborough and they had a beautiful fireplace and there's always logs on it and it felt ever so cozy. And, you know, they'd wheel round drinks in the evening and there was so much food and there were so many people. And, you know, we used to have 14 people around the dinner table and it was just the most kind of, almost a cliche of like what you think of with a, like a traditional British Christmas. And I appreciate it more and more the further I get from that memory. Um, as my aunt and uncle, neither of them are still with us and neither of my grandparents. So I really, I really miss that. And I kind of hope that we can do something similar with my parents and Crystal's parents and all the kids hopefully next year and at the moment we're talking about doing Christmas at Easter uh, with my parents which I quite fancy you don't have the cold and the dark but there's nothing stopping you doing everything else um, and what better excuse would it be to get together and feast frankly than coming towards the end of this pandemic and I really hope that's something we get to do in late mid mid late April walking past all the pubs that have to close mid well close tonight I mean at 10 o'clock I think technically but this is the last night of opening because London's going into tier three it's a really melancholy feeling pubs are very welcoming places around Christmas time when it's dark and often they're you know social centers and I'm not by any stretch saying that I don't think they should be closed during this period the infection rates 
in London are clearly bad and something has to be done. I don't believe that moving, however, from tier two to tier three makes any measurable difference whatsoever. The only noticeable change is being pubs and restaurants have to close and you can no longer meet people in private gardens. Rule of six has to be in public open spaces. Other than that, and a few other kind of places that close, casinos, gambling halls, those kind of things, nightclubs, which I think were closed anyway. Um, it doesn't make any real difference. It's certainly not a step change. It's not enough to really change the rates of infection. If, if that was your goal, what you'd actually do is, as I've said before, is you would close schools and you would close shops because that is where most people meet other people. So it's a melancholy feeling because you feel such sadness for both the people who would like to frequent these establishments and the people who run these establishments who are being effectively scapegoated but to no real effect. It's very sad and who knows but my honest feeling is that they'll have to review the Christmas guidelines which currently say up to three households can meet indoors for five days over the Christmas period. That needs, that needs binning and if, if we're not back in some sort of lockdown in January, if they don't do that, I would be amazed. I am so tired of hating on this incompetent government. It is just boring at this point. I can't wait for the day when I can look at a government and think, you know what, they're doing their best. Good morning from Mortlake. The sunrise this morning has been utterly spectacular and uh, it's kind of the most amazing way to wake up, despite the fact I've got Amelia's cold. But still, look at that. I mean, I don't see sunrises very often, I'll be honest, but still, this seems like a pretty good one to me. This time of year where it's technically autumn, but you know, seasonally kind of feels a bit more like winter because Christmas is nearly upon us. Um, it's that sort of, well, the first three weeks of December, basically, they're always much the same. So you can sometimes get beautiful, clear, crisp days. And it's just very often, how people describe it as unseasonally warm, but it's actually seasonally warm. Um, and you get, you know, 10, 11 degrees, like it was this morning, beautiful, wonderful sunrise, clear skies. And then it turns and you get both of your seasons in a day. Um, and it's now very much wintry uh, than it was. I've come for a bit of a walk. I'm about to drive over to Epsom to pick up a small chest of drawers to put all my watches in. A bit random, but I found it on eBay for 25 quid, so I've got to have somewhere to store them because at the moment they're everywhere. Um, so that's what I'm doing this afternoon. Today I've been playing vlog catch up, having conversations about the International Paralympic Committee podcasts, of which there are technically four more, I think so. This, would have, this week would have been the last one. There was due to be 17. Um, but there's actually 20 now and although one of one of them and I'm not going to tell you which one one of them is a bit rubbish um, and that's the no fault of all the people producing the program except for the guest that the IPC insisted on having is less than forthcoming with answers and it's rather short <laughs> um, anyway so it's 20 episode series um, and 19 of those episodes are excellent. Uh, and, but the only way to know which one isn't excellent is for you to go and listen to all 20 and then feedback. Um, so there we are. Good morning, it's Thursday. It is a truly beautiful late autumn day. And I am gonna go for a walk in Kew Gardens to have a small break in the podcast mastering I'm doing because it's a bit of a bit of a tougher one today and I knew I needed to build a break in so that's what we're doing. I don't know if I mentioned this before but um, if there were to be a sound of 2020 
I have a strong nomination. And I would suggest that it is the bleep bloop that you get from delivery men and the postal service. Because this year has been a year of delivery, hasn't it? Let's be honest. Everything's had to be delivered to home and people have used the shops less. And in reality, it's been a bit of a cardboard nightmare for the amount of delivery, but uh, it can be recycled. But broadly speaking, every single day, at least once a day, you hear the sound bleep bloop as either yourself or your neighbor receives a parcel. Um, and part of this is actually because they're actually doing the delivery job better than they used to be. They're actually recording the delivery rather than just dumping it at your door because <laughs> there's so many of them, they have to be sure they're getting it right. But um, that's my nomination for Sound of 2020. So first things first, I bought a new hat. Um, I've bought quite a lot of new hats this year. They're all basically the same. <laughs> all just a coat of arms on different backgrounds. Um, the background being the hat. Uh, but I really fancied a bobble hat for Christmas particularly. I have a beanie for the rest of the time, but it's Christmas. You need to wear a bobble hat, right? So I made myself a nice monochrome bobble hat. Um, secondarily, what amazing weather so glad I could get out and experience it because it's very changeable as I mentioned yesterday. Tomorrow we are off to see Santa Claus at Chessington Garden Centre because apparently that is allowed to go ahead under tier, th tier 3 restrictions. Yeah I don't I don't understand either but anyway so it will be social distance mask wearing Santa but still I think Amelia will maybe enjoy it. She's met him once this year um, that didn't go great. He turned up at her nursery and she burst into tears and took a while to come round. But to be fair, she's like that with most guys who have beards. So Santa got the regular treatment and then she slowly sort of warms up to you. So whatever her feelings on the matter is, I'm very excited to see Santa Claus <laughs> because I'm determined to absolutely make the most of this Christmas um, and it is a slightly weird thing to do but the weather's otherwise rubbish so we might as well go to a garden centre and meet Santa um, so there we go for the time being I'm going to try and take as many photos of Q in the sunshine as I can to last me for another week or so so nice to visit my garden and very specifically, I am taking ownership of Cambridge Cottage Garden because, you know, we got married there, so that must give us some sort of rights. <laughs> um, it's lovely. I'm very glad I came out. There's a bit of a haze on the horizon. There is going to be clouds this afternoon. But, you know, it's nearly winter, so that's to be expected. But, uh, fresh air does help brief COVID update. I noticed Wales has adopted the measure I pretty much suggested a couple of weeks ago. Two households max, not three. And with a strong, strong message about not actually doing it if you can possibly help it. The government has adopted the strong message while simultaneously not changing the law. It's the government of the United Kingdom, I should suggest. And um, this again is their same approach of legislating for one thing and then telling people to do something else which is a really fucking stupid way of dealing with things leadership is demonstrating what you should be doing and if you don't believe that it can be done you must legislate for it they haven't done that at any point during this pandemic it has been terrible terrible leadership so there we go well done wales and shame on you again absolute shit show that is the government of the United Kingdom. So, Winter Wonderland. We've just come through Alice in Wonderland. You can probably see the Cheshire Cat there. Now, now they're singing penguins. And this year somebody's walking and staring at the, the wonder that is whatever this is. I mean, there seems to be a little red riding hood, a wolf, fairy and some nice lights. 
What do you think, my love? Well, that's a bit of side eye. <laughs> It's exactly as I remember the nativity. It's a singing camel, sort of midget parents, the three wise grandmas. <laughs> This is my favourite bit. It says this is the elf's shop. Oh, there's some elves. Big owl. Everybody moves.